All right, hello everybody. This is another one of my Raspberry Pi tutorial videos. In this video, we're going to be going over how to use a Raspberry Pi as an open VPN server. This means you'll be able to connect back to your home network securely from anywhere in the world. This is great for automated backups and other tasks that you want to be able to do within your network without being forced to expose SSH ports open on the internet. All right, so because of Pi VPN project, setting up a Raspberry Pi VPN server is incredibly easy. And we're just gonna go through the steps right here. All right, so in the last video, we used our Raspberry Pi and DYNU to create a DDNS server so that we would always be able to connect back to our home IP address without paying for a static IP address. This is not required, but it's my preferred method. So as I said before, we're gonna be using Pi VPN project to set up our open VPN server on a Raspberry Pi, and it's incredibly easy. So as you can see here, installation's incredibly simple. All you have to do is curl this and to start the download. All right, so we're just gonna copy this link, and then we're gonna go ahead and SSH into our Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to do this, simply check out the earlier videos in this series. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and SSH into my Raspberry Pi. All right, and now we're just gonna paste in that code. So what we just did was we told our Pi to go to that URL and run that code as bash. If you do not trust a website, never do this, as it's an easy way for somebody to hack into your Raspberry Pi but I trust Pi VPN project. All right, so now that it's installed, it's gonna walk us through a pretty great GUI that they've made to set up the open VPN server. So just hit okay. So in this section, it just is telling us that we need a static IP address, which we already covered in the last video. So we're going to choose our ethernet port for stability. And I would also recommend running this on a Raspberry Pi 4 if possible. This is because the Raspberry Pi 4 has a true gigabit connection, which will just decrease the bottleneck caused by the VPN. So hit Ethernet 0 and OK. All right, so here it's going to tell you you need to have a static IP address within your network, which I've already set up, so I'm going to hit Yes. If you've not done this, it will walk you through how to do it. And now we just choose who's going to hold the permissions. I've only got one user, so it's only going to choose Pi. All right, so here you get to choose what type of VPN you'd like to use. And for us, we're going to be setting up an open VPN server. All right, so now it's going to take a little while as it downloads the configurations for an open VPN server. All right, so now it's going to ask us if we want to use UDP or TCP. And it even tells us which one to use unless we really know what we're doing. UDP has less air checking, but is so much faster. So we're going to go with UDP. And now we're going to choose what port to have our open VPN server hosted on. This is a port we're going to have to set up to allow traffic into our network through our router. So choose it. And the recommendation is just above 1020. So I'm going to choose good number. And I'll also tell you this right now, this will be closed by the time you watch this video. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pick our DNS server. I use Google's 8.8.8.8, .8 so we'll just hit Google. All right, so now we're going to use the custom domain we set up earlier through DYNU. So in here, just type in the custom DDNS server name you set up in the last video. If you did not create your own domain name in the last video, you can just say no, and it will automatically create one for you. But I created my own and hit yes. And as we can see here, it did successfully find the IP address of my house. So that means everything is working. All right, we're gonna be using OpenVPN 2.4 but if you're gonna be using something older, hit no here. This is good because it will really speed up our VPN. All right, 
So now it's going to let us choose how encrypted our certificate is. Basically, this is what's going to be stopping somebody from brute forcing their way into our VPN connection. If you plan on having this set up for five or 10 years and you're not too concerned about traffic speed, it might be worth it to go in a higher encryption level as computers will get faster. But I'll be honest with you, it's unlikely that people are going to be trying to brute force their way into your network. So I'm just going to choose 256. And it is running all the code for us. All right, and so here, it's actually going to have us basically set up our Raspberry Pi to update automatically. This is good to do, especially for security bugs when you're going to be opening up your Raspberry Pi to the world. I would say yes here. So that way, any security patches will automatically be added. All right, and so now it's going to take quite a while. All right, and so now it has finally completed. And as we can see here, to create a new OpenVPN profile, all we have to do is run pyvpn add. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. So it's gonna ask us to reboot and we're gonna say yes. All right, so while the Raspberry Pi is rebooting, you're gonna to have to open up whatever port you specified in the setup menu to your Raspberry Pi. The way you do this is you actually log into your router. The address of your router is most likely 192.168.1.1. And so try hitting that into a web browser. Every router is going to have a different way of setting this up. So you're going to have to look it up on your own specific router. When you're setting it up, it may ask you between a UDP and a TCP protocol. If you selected UDP, do UDP. If you selected TCP, choose TCP. You probably selected UDP though. That's the recommended setting. All right, so now our Raspberry Pi should have had time to reboot. So let's go ahead and SSH back into it. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to create a new VPN profile. So we're gonna do Pi VPN add. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a VPN profile for every single device we would like to connect to the network. So I'll just do this one real quick for my Mac. So I'll just have this expire after 10 days because it's a test one and enter in a password. All right, so now that that's run, we can see right here that a open VPN file was created in the home folder for my Raspberry Pi in open VPNs. So let's just CD into that. All right, so as you can see here, we've got this open VPN profile for my Mac. So now we need to get it on my Mac. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of the SSH shell and we're gonna use a secure copy to grab it. So we're gonna do SCP for secure copy. Then we're gonna type the SSH for the Raspberry Pi followed by colon slash and the absolute path to the directory that we've got it in. And we'll save it to desktop. All right. And so as we can see right here, it's successfully copied over this open VPN profile. All right, hello everybody. Sorry, there, there's a bit of a retraction here. So originally when I was shooting that video, I was using open VPN client. And after shooting it and testing with it some more, I've determined that it is not a good app and I could get it to work, but it continuously crashed. Instead, I found that the best Mac OS app is TunnelBlick. But depending on the operating system you're using, you're going to have to pick the best open VPN client. My next video is actually going to cover how to set up a VPN client on a Raspberry Pi using open VPN. So we'll have our Raspberry Pi client hooked up at a remote site that automatically connects back to our network using open VPN. And we'll even be able to assign it a static IP address on a different subnet, but we'll still be able to hit it from our network. And so that video should be coming out tomorrow, which is Sunday, March 29th. All right. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Bye.